Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is an American retired professional basketball player who played 20 seasons in the National Basketball Association for the Milwaukee Bucks and the Los Angeles Lakers. During his career as a center, Abdul-Jabbar was a record six-time NBA Most Valuable Player, a record 19-time NBA All-Star, a 15-time All-NBA selection, and an 11-time NBA All-Defensive Team member, a member of six NBA championship teams as a player and two as an assistant coach. Abdul-Jabbar twice was voted NBA Finals MVP. In 1996, he was honored as one of the 50 greatest players in NBA history. NBA coach Pat Riley and players Isaiah Thomas and Julius Irving have called him the greatest basketball player of all time. After winning 71 consecutive basketball games on his high school team in New York City, Alcindor attended college at UCLA, where he played for coach John Wooden on three consecutive national championship basketball teams, and was a record three-time MVP of the NCAA tournament. Drafted by the one-season Old Bucks franchise in the 1969 NBA draft with the first overall pick, Alcindor spent six seasons in Milwaukee. After winning his first NBA championship in 1971, he adopted the Muslim name Kareem Abdul-Jabbar at age 24. Using his trademark, Skyhook, shot, he established himself as one of the league's top scorers. In 1975, he was traded to the Lakers, with whom he played the last 14 seasons of his career and won five additional NBA championships. Abdul-Jabbar's contributions were a key component in the Showtime era of Lakers basketball. Over his 20-year NBA career his team succeeded in making the playoffs 18 times and passed the first round in 14 of them. His team reached the NBA Finals 10 times. At the time of his retirement in 1989, Abdul-Jabbar was the NBA's all-time leader in points scored. Games played, minutes played, field goals made, field goal attempts, blocked shots, defensive rebounds, career wins, and personal fouls. He remains the all-time leading scorer in the NBA, and player with most career wins. He is ranked third all-time in both rebounds and blocks. In 2007, ESPN voted him the greatest center of all time. In 2008, they named him the greatest player in college basketball history. And in 2016, they named him the second best player in NBA history. Abdul-Jabbar has also been an actor, a basketball coach, and a best-selling author. In 2012, he was selected by Secretary of State Hillary Clinton to be a U.S. global cultural ambassador. In 2016, he received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Barack Obama. Early life and high school Ferdinand Luis Alcindor, Jr. was born in New York City, the only child of Cora Lillian, a department store price checker, and Ferdinand Luis Alcindor, Sr., a transit police officer and jazz musician. He attended a Catholic high school in Manhattan. Jabbar was unusually large and tall from a young age. At birth he weighed and was long, and by age nine he was already tall. By the eighth grade he had grown to tall and could already slam dunk a basketball on a regulation hoop. He would eventually reach his full height of when he entered the NBA at age 22. From an early age, Lou Alcindor began his record-breaking basketball accomplishments. In high school, he led coach Jack Donahue's Power Memorial Academy team to three straight New York City Catholic championships, a 71-game winning streak, and a 79-2 overall record. This earned him a nickname, the Tower from Power. His 2067 total points were a New York City high school record. The team won the National High School Boys Basketball Championship 
when Alcindor was in 11th grade, and was runner-up his senior year. UCLA Alcindor played on the UCL a freshman team only, because the freshman rule was in effect. From 1967 to 69, he played under coach John Wooden, contributing to the team's three-year record of 88 wins and only two losses, one to the University of Houston in which Alcindor had a not fully healed eye injury and the other to crosstown rival USC who played a stall game in his first college game. Liu set a UCL a single-game record with 56 points. During his college career, Alcindor was twice named Player of the Year, was a three-time first-team All-American, played on three NCAA basketball champion teams was honored as the most outstanding player in the NCAA tournament, and became the first ever Naismith College Player of the Year in 1969. In 1967 and 1968, he also won USBWA College Player of the Year which later became the Oscar Robertson Trophy. Alcindor became the only player to win the Helms Foundation Player of the Year award three times. The 1965-66 UCL A Bruin team was the preseason, but on November 27, 1965, the freshman team led by Alcindor defeated the varsity team 75-60 in the first game in the new Pauley Pavilion. Alcindor scored 31 points and had 21 rebounds in that game. Alcindor had considered transferring to the University of Michigan, because of unfulfilled promises from recruiting. UCLA player Willie Knowles introduced Alcindor and teammate Lucius Allen to businessman Sam Gilbert, who convinced the pair to remain at UCLA. The dunk was banned in college basketball after the 1967 season, primarily because of Alcindor's dominant use of the shot. It was not allowed again until the 1976-1977 season. While playing for UCLA, Alcindor suffered a scratched left cornea on January 12, 1968, at the Cal game when he was struck by Tom Henderson of Cal in a rebound battle. He would miss the next two games against Stanford and Portland. This happened right before the showdown game against Houston. His cornea later would be scratched again during his pro career, subsequently causing him to wear goggles for protection. Conversion to Islam and 1968 Olympics boycott In the summer of 1968, while attending UCLA, he took the Shahada twice and converted to Sunni Islam, though he did not begin publicly using his Arabic name until 1971. Alcindor boycotted the 1968 Summer Olympics by deciding not to join the United States men's Olympic basketball team that year, protesting the unequal treatment of African Americans in the United States. He was one of only four players to have started on three NCAA championship teams, the others all played for Wooden. At UCLA, Henry Bibby, Curtis Rowan Lynn Shackelford, along with playing basketball, Alcindor earned a Bachelor of Arts with a major in history from UCLA in 1969. In his free time he practiced martial arts. He studied Jeet Kune Do under Bruce Lee. Game of the Century After unprecedented third straight national title in 1969 on January 20, 1968, Alcindor and the UCLA Bruins faced coach Guy Lewis Houston Cougars in the first ever nationally televised regular season college basketball game. There were 52,693 people in attendance. At the Houston Astrodome, Elvin Hayes scored 39 points and had 15 rebounds, while Alcindor, who suffered from a scratch on his left cornea, 
was held to just 15 points as Houston beat UCL a 71-69. The Bruins' 47-game winning streak ended in what has been called the game of the century. Hayes and Al Sindor would have a rematch in the NCAA tournament where UCLA, with a healthy Al Sindor, would defeat Houston in the semi-finals 101-69 and go on to win the national championship. In the rematch UCLA limited Hayes, who was averaging 37.7 points per game, to only 10 points. Wooden credited his assistant, Jerry Norman, for devising the diamond and one defense that contained Hayes. School records as of the 2011-12 season, he still holds or shares a number of individual records. A UCLA highest career scoring average, 26.4, most career field goals, 943, Don McLean. Most points in a season, 870, highest season scoring average, 29.0. Most field goals in a season, 346. Most free throw attempts in a season, 274. Most points in a single game, 61. Most field goals in a single game, 26. Milwaukee Bucks of the Baltimore Bullets the Harlem Globetrotters offered Al Sindor $1 million to play for them but he declined, and was picked first in the 1969 NBA draft by the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks won a coin toss with the Phoenix Suns, for first pick. He was also chosen first overall in the 1969 American Basketball Association draft by the New York Nets. The Nets believed that they had the upper hand in securing Al Cinder's services because he was from New York. However, when Al Sindor told both the Bucks and the Nets that he would accept one offer only from each team, the Nets bid too low. Sam Gilbert negotiated the contract along with Los Angeles businessman Ralph Shapiro at no charge. After Al Sindor chose the Milwaukee Bucks offer of $1.4 million, the Nets offered a guaranteed $3.25 million. Al Sindor declined the offer, saying, A bidding war degrades the people involved. It would make me feel like a flesh peddler. And I don't want to think like that. Al Sindor's presence enabled the 1969 70 Bucks to claim second place in the NBA's Eastern Division with a 56 26 record. Al Sindor was an instant star, ranking second in the league in scoring and third in rebounding for which he was awarded the title of NBA Rookie of the Year. The next season, the Bucks acquired All-Star guard Oscar Robertson. Milwaukee went on to record the best record in the league with 66 victories in the 1970-71 NBA season, including a then-record 20 straight wins. Al Sindor was awarded his first of six NBA Most Valuable Player awards, along with his first scoring title. He also led the league in total points, with 2,596. In the playoffs, the Bucks went 12-2, and won the championship, while Al Sindor was named Finals MVP. On May 1, 1971, the day after the Bucks won the NBA championship, he adopted the Muslim name Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Its translation roughly, generous, noble, servant of the mighty, stern one I. E. of God. He had previously converted to Islam while at UCLA. Abdul-Jabbar remained a dominant force for Milwaukee, repeating as scoring champion and NBA most valuable player the following year and helping the Bucks to repeat as division leaders for four straight years. In 1974, Abdul-Jabbar won his third MVP award in five years, and was among the top five NBA players in scoring, rebounding, blocked shots, and field goal percentage, while remaining relatively injury-free throughout his NBA career. Abdul-Jabbar twice broke one of his hands, 
The first time was during a pre-season game in 1974, when he was bumped hard and got his eye scratched, which angered him enough to punch the basket support stanchion. When he returned, after missing the first 16 games of the season, he started to wear protective goggles. The second time he broke a hand was in the opening game of the 1977-78 NBA season. Two minutes into the game, Abdul-Jabbar punched Milwaukee's Kent Benson in retaliation for an overly aggressive elbow, causing Benson's jaw to be broken. Abdul-Jabbar broke a hand in the incident and was out for two months, otherwise, he could have potentially been suspended by the NBA. Although Abdul-Jabbar always spoke well of Milwaukee and its fans, he said that being in the Midwest did not fit his cultural needs, and requested a trade to either New York or Los Angeles in October 1974. Los Angeles Lakers in 1975, the Lakers acquired Abdul Jabbar and reserve center Walt Wesley from the Bucks for center Elmore Smith, guard Brian Winters, and rookie blue chippers Dave Myers and junior Bridgman. In the 1975 76 season, his first with the Lakers, he had a dominating season, averaging 27.7 points per game and leading the league in rebounding, blocked shots, and minutes played. His 11-11 defensive rebounds remains the NBA single-season record. Also, Abdul-Jabbar's season marked the last time anyone had 4,000 or more PRA in a single NBA season. He earned his fourth MVP award, but missed the postseason for the second straight year. Once he joined the Lakers, Abdul-Jabbar began wearing his trademark goggles. Years of battling under NBA backboards and being hit and scratched in the face in the process had taken the toll on his eyes and he developed corneal erosion syndrome, where the eyes begin to dry out easily and cease to produce moisture. He missed one game in the 1986-87 season due to his eyes drying out and swelling as a result. In the 1976-77 season, Abdul-Jabbar had another strong season. He led the league in field goal percentage, finished second in rebounds and blocked shots, and third in points per game. He helped lead the Lakers to the best record in the NBA, and he won his record-tying fifth MVP award in the playoffs. The Lakers beat the Golden State Warriors in the Western Conference semi-finals, setting up a confrontation with the Portland Trail Blazers. The result was a memorable matchup, pitting Abdul-Jabbar against a young, injury-free Bill Walton. Although Abdul-Jabbar dominated the series statistically, Walton and the Trail Blazers swept the Lakers behind Walton's skillful passing and leadership. Abdul-Jabbar's play remained strong during the next two seasons, being named to the All-NBA second team twice, the All-Defense first team once, and the All-Defense second team once. The Lakers, however, continued to be stymied in the playoffs, being eliminated by the Seattle Supersonics in both 1978 and 1979. In 1979, the Lakers acquired first overall draft pick Ivan Magic Johnson. The trade and draft paved the way for a Laker dynasty as they went on to become one of the most dominant teams of the 1980s, appearing in the finals eight times and winning five NBA championships individually. While Abdul-Jabbar was not the dominant center he had been in the 1970s, he experienced a number of highlight moments. Among them were his record sixth MVP award in 1980, four more All-NBA first-team designations, two more All-Defense first-team designations, the 1985 Finals MVP, and on April 5, 1984 breaking Wilt Chamberlain's record for most career points. Later in his career, he bulked up to about 265 pounds to be able to withstand the strain 
of playing the highly physical center position into his early 40s. While in Los Angeles, Abdul-Jabbar started doing yoga in 1976 to improve his flexibility, and was notable for his physical fitness regimen. He says, There is no way I could have played as long as I did without yoga. In 1983, Abdul Jabbar's house burned down, destroying many of his belongings, including his beloved Jazz LP collection. Many Lakers fans sent and brought him albums, which he found uplifting. On June 28, 1989, after 20 professional seasons, Abdul Jabbar announced his retirement. On his retirement tour, he received standing ovations at games, home and away and gifts ranging from a yacht that said, Captain Skyhook to frame jerseys from his basketball career to an Afghan rug. In his biography My Life, Magic Johnson recalls that in Abdul Jabbar's farewell game, many Lakers and Celtics legends participated. Every player wore Abdul Jabbar's trademark goggles and had to try a Skyhook at least once, which led to comic results. The Lakers made the NBA Finals in each of Abdul-Jabbar's final three seasons, defeating Boston in 1987, and Detroit in 1988. The Lakers lost to the Pistons in a four-game sweep in his final season. At the time of his retirement, Abdul-Jabbar held the record for most games played by a single player in the NBA. This would later be broken by Robert Parrish. He also was the all-time record holder for most points, most field goals made, and most minutes played. Post-NBA career Since 2005, Abdul-Jabbar has served as special assistant coach for the Lakers. Abdul-Jabbar had been interested in coaching since his retirement, and given the influence he had on the league, he thought that the opportunity would present itself. However, during his playing years, Abdul-Jabbar had developed a reputation of being introverted and sullen. He did not speak to the press, leading to the impression that he disliked them. In his biography My Life, Magic Johnson recalls instances when Abdul-Jabbar brushed him off. When Magic asked for his autograph, Abdul-Jabbar froze out reporters who gave him a too enthusiastic handshake or even hugged him, and refused to stop reading the newspaper while giving an interview. Many basketball observers, in addition to Abdul-Jabbar, believe that Karim's reticence, whether through disdain for the press corps or simply because of introversion, contributed to the dearth of coaching opportunities offered to Abdul-Jabbar by the NBA. In his words, he said he had a mindset he could not overcome, and proceeded through his career oblivious to the effect his reticence may have had on his future coaching prospects. Abdul-Jabbar said, I didn't understand that I also had affected people that way, and that's what it was all about. I always saw it like they were trying to pry. I was way too suspicious, and I paid a price for it. Since he began lobbying for a coaching position in 1995, he has managed to obtain only low-level assistant and scouting jobs in the NBA, and a head coaching position only in a minor professional league. Abdul-Jabbar has worked as an assistant for the Los Angeles Clippers and the Seattle Supersonics, helping mentor, among others, the young centers, Michael Olawokandi and Jerome James. Abdul-Jabbar was the head coach of the Oklahoma Storm of the United States Basketball League in 2002, leading the team to the league's championship that season. But he failed to land the head coaching position at Columbia University a year later. He then worked as a scout for the New York Knicks. Finally, on September 2, 2005, he returned to the Lakers as a special assistant to Phil Jackson to help the Lakers centers, and in particular their young draftee Andrew Bynum. Abdul-Jabbar's influence has been credited with Bynum's emergence as a more talented NBA center. Abdul-Jabbar also served as a volunteer coach 
at Alcasay High School on the Fort Apache Indian Reservation in White River, Arizona in 1998. In 2016, he performed a tribute to friend Muhammad Ali along with Chance the Rapper. He is also co-author of a comic book published by Titan Comics entitled Mycroft Homes and the Apocalypse Handbook. Player Profile On offense, Abdul-Jabbar was an unstoppable low-post threat. In contrast, two other low-post dominators like Wilt Chamberlain, Artis Gilmore or Shaquille O'Neal. Abdul-Jabbar was a relatively slender player, standing tall, but only weighing. However, he made up for his relative lack of bulk by showing textbook finesse, strength, and was famous for his ambidextrous skyhook shot, which defenders found impossible to block. It contributed to his high .559 field goal accuracy, making him the eighth most accurate scorer of all time and a feared clutch shooter. Abdul-Jabbar was also quick enough to run the Showtime fast break led by Magic Johnson, and was well-conditioned, standing on the hardwood an average 36.8 minutes. In contrast to other big men, Abdul-Jabbar also could reasonably hit his free throws, finishing with a career 72% average in the late 1980s, shortly before his retirement. On defense, Abdul-Jabbar maintained a dominant presence. He was selected to the NBA All-Defensive Team 11 times. He frustrated opponents with his superior shot-blocking ability, denying an average 2.6 shots a game. After the pounding he endured early in his career, his rebounding average fell to between 6 or 8 a game in his latter years. As a teammate, Abdul-Jabbar exuded natural leadership and was affectionately called Cap, or Captain, by his colleagues. He had an even temperament, which Riley said made him coachable. A strict fitness regime made him one of the most durable players of all time. In the NBA, his 20 seasons and 1560 games of performances surpassed only by former Celtic center Robert Parrish. Skyhook Abdul-Jabbar was well known for his trademark, Skyhook, a hook shot in which he bent his entire body like a straw in one fluid motion to raise the ball, and then release it at the highest point of his arm's arching motion. Combined with his long arms and great height, the Skyhook was difficult for a defender to block without goaltending. It was a reliable and feared offensive weapon, and contributed to his high lifetime field goal percentage of 0 0.559. He was adept at shooting the skyhook with either hand, which made him even more difficult to defend against, though as a right-handed player. He was stronger shooting the skyhook with his right hand than he was with his left. According to Abdul-Jabbar, he learned the move in fifth grade after practicing with the mic and drill, and soon learned to value it, as it was, the only shot I could use that didn't get smashed back in my face. Legacy Abdul-Jabbar is the NBA's all-time leading scorer with 38,387 points and won a league record six MVP awards. He collected six championship rings, two finals MVP awards, 15 NBA first to second teams, a record 19 NBA All-Star call-ups, and averaging 24.6 points, 11.2 rebounds, 3.6 assists, and 2.6 blocks per game. He is ranked as the NBA's third leading all-time rebounder. He is also the third all-time in registered blocks, which is even more impressive, because this stat had not been recorded until the fourth year of his career. Abdul-Jabbar combined dominance during his career peak with the longevity and sustained excellence of his latter years. After claiming his sixth and final MVP in 1980, he continued to average above 20 points in the following six seasons, 
including 23 points per game in his 17th season at age 38. He made the NBA's 35th anniversary team and was named one of its 50 greatest players of all time in 1996. Abdul-Jabbar is regarded as one of the best centers ever, and league experts and basketball legends frequently mentioned him when considering the greatest player of all time. Former Lakers coach Pat Riley once said, Why judge any more, when a man has broken records, won championships, endured tremendous criticism, and responsibility? Why judge? Let's toast him as the greatest player ever. Isaiah Thomas remarked, If they say the numbers don't lie, then Kareem is the greatest ever to play the game. Julius Irving in 2013 said, In terms of players all time, Kareem is still the number one guy. He's the guy you gotta start your franchise with. In 2015, ESPN named Abdul-Jabbar the best center in NBA history and ranked him number two behind Michael Jordan among the greatest NBA players ever. While Jordan's shots were enthralling and considered unfathomable, Abdul-Jabbar's skyhook appeared automatic, and he himself called the shot unsexy. Film and Television Circa 1982 with actor Shava Ross Playing in Los Angeles facilitated Abdul-Jabbar's trying his hand at acting. He made his film debut in Bruce Lee's 1972 film Game of Death, in which his character Hakim fights Billy Lowe. In 1980, he played co-pilot Roger Murdoch in Airplane. Abdul-Jabbar has a scene in which a little boy looks at him and remarks that he is in fact Abdul-Jabbar, spoofing the appearance of football star Elroy Crazy Legs Hirsch as an airplane pilot in the 1957 drama that served as the inspiration for Airplane Zero Hour. Staying in character, Abdul-Jabbar states that he is merely Roger Murdoch, an airline co-pilot. But the boy continues to insist that Abdul-Jabbar is the greatest, but that According to his father, he doesn't work hard on defense and never really tries, except during the playoffs. This causes Abdul-Jabbar's character to snap, the hell I don't, then grab the boy and snarl he has heard that crap since UCLA, he busts his buns every night, and the boy should tell you his old man to drag Bill Walton and Bob Lanier up and down the court for 48 minutes. When Murdoch loses consciousness later in the film, he collapses at the controls wearing Abdul-Jabbar's goggles and yellow Lakers shorts, with Comedy Central hosts John Stewart and Stephen Colbert. Abdul-Jabbar has had numerous other television and film appearances, often playing himself. He has had roles in movies such as Fletch, Troop Beverly Hills, and Forget Paris, and television series such as Full House, Living Single, Amen, Everybody Loves Raymond, Martin, De France Strokes, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Scrubs, 21 Jump Street, Emergency, Man from Atlantis, and New Girl. Abdul-Jabbar played a genie in a lamp in a 1984 episode of Tales from the Dark Side. He also played himself on the February 10, 1994 episode of the sketch comedy television series In Living Color. He also appeared in the television version of Stephen King's The Stand, played the Archangel of Basketball in Slam Dunk Ernest, and had a brief non-speaking cameo appearance in Basketball. Abdul-Jabbar was also the co-executive producer of the 1994 TV film Road to Freedom, The Vernon Johns Story. He has also made appearances on The Colbert Report. In a 2006 skit called Hip Hop Kitball 2, The Rajazabration Remix, 06, and in 2008 as a stage manager who is sent out on a mission to find Nazi gold, Abdul Jabbar also voiced himself in a 2011 episode of The Simpsons titled, Love is a Many Strangled Thing. He had a recurring role as himself on the NBC series Guys with Kids, 
which aired from 2012 to 2013. On Al Jazeera English he expressed his desire to be remembered not just as a player, but somebody who had many talents and used them. Abdul Jabbar was selected to appear in the 2013 ABC reality series Splash, a celebrity diving competition. Abdul Jabbar has also created the 2011 documentary On the Shoulders of Giants, based on the all black basketball team New York Renaissance. Abdul Jabbar has also appeared with Robert Hayes in a 2014 airplane parody commercial promoting. Wisconsin Tourism. In 2015, he appeared in an HBO documentary on his life, Kareem, Minority, of One. Writing and Activism Abdul Jabbar is also a best-selling author and cultural critic. His first book, his autobiography Giant Steps, was written in 1983 with co-author Peter Nobler. Others include On the Shoulders of Giants, My Journey Through the Harlem Renaissance, co-written with Raymond Obstfeld and Brothers in Arms, The Epic Story of the 761st Tank Battalion, World War II's Forgotten Heroes, co-written with Anthony Walton, which is a history of an all-black armored unit that served with distinction in Europe. Abdul Jabbar has also been a regular contributor to discussions about issues of race and religion, among other topics, in national magazines and on television. He has written a regular column for Time, for example, and he appeared on Meet the Press on Sunday, January 25, 2015, to talk about a recent column which pointed out that Islam should not be blamed for the actions of violent extremists. Just as Christianity has not been blamed for the actions of violent extremists who profess Christianity, when asked about being Muslim, he said, I don't have any misgiving about my faith. I'm very concerned about the people who claim to be Muslims that are murdering people and creating all this mayhem in the world. That is not what Islam is about, and that should not be what people think of when they think about Muslims. But it's up to all of us to do something about all of it. In November 2014, Abdul Jabbar published an essay in Jacobin magazine calling for just compensation for college athletes, writing, In the name of fairness, we must bring an end to the indentured servitude of college athletes and start paying them what they are worth. In 2007, Abdul Jabbar participated in the National UCLA alumni commercial entitled My Big UCLA Moment. The UCLA commercial is featured on YouTube. On February 10, 2011, Abdul Jabbar debuted his film On the Shoulders of Giants, documenting the tumultuous journey of the famed yet often overlooked Harlem Renaissance professional basketball team at Science Park High School in Newark, New Jersey. The event was simulcasted live throughout the school, city, and state. Commentating on Donald Trump's 2017 travel ban, he denounced it as pure evil, saying, The absence of reason and compassion is the very definition of pure evil, because it is a rejection of our sacred values, distilled from millennia of struggle. Cultural Ambassador. Dot. In January the 2012, United States Secretary of State Hillary Clinton announced that Abdul Jabbar had accepted a position as a cultural ambassador for the United States. During the announcement press conference, Abdul Jabbar commented on the historical legacy of African Americans as representatives of U.S. Culture. I remember when Louis Armstrong first did it back for President Kennedy, one of my heroes. So it's nice to be following in his footsteps. As part of this role, Abdul Jabbar has traveled to Brazil to promote education for local youths. President's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. Former President Barack Obama announced in his last days 
of office that he has appointed Abdul Jabbar along with Gabrielle Douglas and Carly Loy to the President's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. Personal Life in January 2005 Abdul-Jabbar met Habiba Abdul-Jabbar at a Lakers game during his senior year at UCLA. They eventually married and together had three children, daughters Habiba and Sultana, and son Kareem Jr., who played college basketball at Western Kentucky after attending junior college. Abdul-Jabbar and Janice divorced in 1978. He has another son, Amir, with Cheryl Pistano. Another son, Adam, made an appearance on the TV sitcom Full House with him. Religion and name In 1971, at 24, he converted to Islam and became Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, which means, the Noble One, Servant of the Almighty. He was named by Hamas Abdul Khalas. Abdul Jabbar purchased and donated a house in Washington, D.C. for Carlis to use as the Hanafi Madhab Center. Eventually, Karim found that he disagreed with some of Hamar's teachings about the Quran, and they parted ways, speaking about the thinking behind his change of name. When he converted to Islam, he stated that he was latching on to something that was part of my heritage, because many of the slaves who were brought here were Muslims. My family was brought to America by a French planter named Al Sindor, who came here from Trinidad in the 18th century. My people were Yoruba, and their culture survived slavery. My father found out about that when I was a kid, and it gave me all I needed to know that, hey, I was somebody, even if nobody else knew about it. When I was a kid, no one would believe anything positive that you could say about black people. And that's a terrible burden on black people, because they don't have an accurate idea of the history, which has been either suppressed or distorted. In 1998, Abdul Jabbar reached a settlement after suing Miami Dolphins running back Kareem Abdul Jabbar because he felt Kareem was sponging off the name he made famous by having the Abdul Jabbar moniker and number 33 on his Dolphins jersey. As a result, the younger Abdul Jabbar had to change his jersey nameplate to simply Abdul while playing for the Dolphins. The football player had also been an athlete at UCLA. Health Problems Abdul Jabbar suffers from migraines, and his use of cannabis to reduce the symptoms has had legal ramifications. In November 2009, Abdul Jabbar announced that he was suffering from a form of leukemia. Philadelphia chromosome-positive chronic myeloid leukemia, a cancer of the blood and bone marrow. The disease was diagnosed in December 2008, but Abdul-Jabbar said his condition could be managed by taking oral medication daily, seeing his specialist every other month and getting his blood analyzed regularly. He expressed in a 2009 press conference that he did not believe that the illness would stop him from leading a normal life. Abdul Jabbar became a spokesman for Novartis, the company that produces his cancer medication, Cleavage. In February 2011, Abdul Jabbar announced via Twitter that his leukemia was gone and he was 100% cancer free. A few days later, he clarified his misstatement. You're never really cancer free. And I should have known that, Abdul Jabbar said. My cancer right now is at an absolute minimum. In April 2015, Abdul Jabbar was admitted to the hospital when diagnosed with cardiovascular disease. Later that week, on his 68th birthday, he underwent quadruple coronary bypass surgery at the UCLA Medical Center. He was expected to make a full recovery. Audiobook 
On the Shoulders of Giants, an audio journey through the Harlem Renaissance 8 CD set Volume 1-4, with Avery Brooks, Jesse L. Martin, Maya Angelou, Herbie Hancock, Billy Crystal, Charles Barkley, James Worthy, Julius Irving, Jerry West, Clyde Drexler, Bill Russell, Coach John Wooden, Stanley Crouch, Quincy Jones, and other chart-topping musicians, as well as legendary actors and performers such as Samuel L. Jackson. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.